Good evening. I'm Haley Wilgus. And I'm Scott Dennis. Thanks so much for being with us. Our top story tonight, a day of ref reflection on one of the deadliest attacks in American history. 75 years ago today, on the morning of December 7th, 1941, Japanese planes attacked Pearl Harbor. 2,403 United States personnel were killed and 1,178 were injured. The assault drew the U.S. into World War II. Commemorations of the attack and the lives lost are being held in Hawaii and across the country. ABC's Elizabeth Hur takes us to some of those ceremonies. From Washington to New York and Hawaii. For veterans, families, and survivors. United States Air Force. A day to reflect and remember Pearl Harbor. We were just servicemen who were serving our country at that time. Memories dim. Some memories do, some don't. There was more courage and more heroics and more valor and more sacrifice that day than a human being ought to see. There were eight battleships in the harbor. All were damaged by the bomb and torpedo attack. President Franklin Roosevelt called December 7th, 1941, a day which will live in infamy. The Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor killed more than 2,400 Americans and wounded nearly 1,200. 75 years later, ceremonies to honor heroes. Former POW Senator John McCain and Vice President-elect Mike Pence in D.C. They fought the first battle and set the first example in the long campaign of America's enlightened leadership of the free world. President Obama is headed to Pearl Harbor later this month, where he will be joined by Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, the first Japanese leader to visit Pearl Harbor since the end of the war. Elizabeth Herr, ABC News, New York. Here on the Sun Coast, a Pearl Harbor survivor is telling his story from that day. In Venice, a 95-year-old man named Lester Gensler says that day was unlike anything he had ever experienced. ABC 7's Christopher Brantley joins us now with more. Christopher? Well, Scott, Lester Gensler enlisted into the Army Infantry in April of 1941. At the time, he imagined his service would be uneventful, more firing up cooking ovens than firing at enemy planes. But all of that changed in the early morning hours of December 7th, 1941. I woke up, I heard the bombs, but they weren't. We were used to that. As he had before, Gensler was woken up by bombing, but this time it didn't sound like a test. Something was different. All of a sudden I heard that, 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 that. I told Hawker, I said, get out of bed, I don't like it. Gensler grabbed his rifle and headed towards the hospital. Japanese planes were flying all overhead. I had looked up towards the hospital and I seen him bank. And I seen two bread balls. The next one flew over. I shot it. That's uh, got three shots. Gensler was wounded in his ankle, but he eventually made it to his firing location on a hill. By the time he got there, he could see the destruction. Everybody says Pearl Harbor, but they hit all over that island. He saw bodies everywhere, rows and rows of them. For all these years, Gensler's has kept a diary detailing harrowing moments and dates. In 1945, as the war was ending, so did his military career. He married his sweetheart. He struggled to find work for many years, picking up odd jobs here and there. It's hard to imagine how life could get much worse after the attack on Pearl Harbor, but for Gensler, it found a way. One of his hardest days came in February of 1983. He fell on the floor, and I went over and we used an artificial respiration. I couldn't get nothing. Their only son collapsed in their kitchen after a lifelong illness and died. I missed him so. For the last 71 years of ups and downs, his wife has been by his side. He credits her for getting him through what has been a tough life. You guys are so He's been with me all the time. Of course, she's had her troubles too. We have through it. Gensler told us he does not like to talk much about his memories from the attack that day. He did lose a member of his company in the bombing. He does, however, want to make sure people know what happened and have respect for all of the men and women who died that day. Haley?
Thank you, Christopher. A retirement home in Bradenton took time to honor veterans on this anniversary of the Pearl Harbor attack. A Silver Star recipient was invited to Cypress Springs Gracious Retirement Living to give a special speech. He then handed out medals to all of the veterans and thanked them for their service and sacrifice. That can never be taken away. That experience was transcended most other experiences I had in my life during the 27 years of service in the Navy. The ceremony also included a color guard presentation and the veterans were treated to lunch. Certainly deserve that. Yes, they do. And, that and uh, much more. Yeah, and the weather on this Pearl Harbor Day, just perfect here on the Sun Coast. Let's get more details now with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. That's right. It was nice today. Uh, we had some fog, low clouds around this morning. I want to show you the time lapse from Lakewood Ranch your webcam. You can see this is uh, actually 5 o'clock this evening. We'll show you that in a little bit, but we had some fog around that has since moved on. But that stationary front down to our south will eventually become a player again as an area of low pressure will develop along that front and sweep another cold front our way. Also give us a chance for some showers. It looks like uh, mainly tomorrow midday and then continuing uh, through the overnight through Friday morning. Currently though, uh, we have fair skies, lots of sunshine, 71. Dew point is at 62. We have northwest winds at 13. And the pressure now, 30.05. That's high. That continues to rise. And it looks as though we will see, though, increasing clouds beginning tonight as a result of the overrunning, if you will. This front is still down to our south and producing some showers near the Keys and south thereof. But for us, we're high and dry right now, and we'll stay that way through the overnight hours. The only downside may be a little bit of patchy fog forming. More in the forecast. Let you know about the coldest air of the season headed our way. Coming up in a few minutes. Back to you. All right, Bob, thank you. Federal authorities say a Tampa woman is charged with making death threats against the parents of a child who died in the Sandy Hook Elementary School shootings. Justice officials say Lucy Richards made the threats because she thought the shootings in Newtown, Connecticut back in 2012 were a hoax. The child's parents now live in South Florida. Richards is charged with four counts of transmitting threats. Each count carries a maximum term of five years in prison. The Sandy Hook shootings left 20 children and six adults dead. The Sarasota County Sheriff's Office is continuing its effort to bridge the gap between law enforcement and the community. The Sheriff's Office released a public service video that details the ideal behavior to exhibit during a traffic stop. The tips include remaining calm at all times, keeping your hands on the steering wheel, and following law enforcement's command. And while the video serves a great purpose, many in the minority communities say that it perpetuates the idea that recent police shootings happened because the victims did something wrong. So it's, it's a good idea to, to get that information out. However, I don't want people to get the impression that uh, the people that were shot by police officers was not complying uh, to the police officers. So there's too many uh, incidents that we know that people complied and still were shot down or murdered. Despite the mixed reaction, there are many who say informing the public of proper traffic stop procedures is a step in the right direction. Sarasota County Sheriff's deputies need your help tracking down a man who broke into a Sarasota home. Surveillance video shows the man breaking into this home on Olive Avenue on November 23rd. He paces through the living room, as you see here, before ste stealing several items, including cash and jewelry. The burglar appears to have tattoos on his left bicep and on the back of his neck. If you have any information, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers at 366-TIPS. A follow-up now on the turnout for this year's Englewood Beach Waterfest. Last month, more than 50 powerboats competed in 11 different classes of racing over the weekend. The event was a big success. Organizers say they don't have final numbers yet on how many people attended, but they estimate it at a crowd of about 20,000 over the weekend. They also believe the event earned a profit of about $80,000. Organizers attribute the success to the great cooperation of, of Sarasota and Charlotte counties and the 200-plus volunteers who worked the event. Good weather for it. Yeah, it was yeah. perfect, yeah. Still to come in your Suncoast News, narrowing in on the cause of a deadly warehouse fire, what investigators think may have sparked the blaze that killed three dozen people. And ABC7 Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan will be back with your full weather forecast. Plus, biopsies may soon be a thing of the past, the new way to diagnose skin cancer. That's coming up in Health Smart.
Don't miss the 19th annual Thunder by the Bay Motorcycle Festival, January 5th through the 8th, to benefit Suncoast Charities for Children. This year's festival welcomes special guest Blue Oyster Cult to the premier sports campus at Lakewood Ranch on January 8th at 4 p.m. Admission is free. Festival events include a sporting clay tournament, kickoff party, welcome Thunder event, cruise for cash, charity motorcycle ride, and a two-day rockin' and ridin' at the ranch festival featuring vendors, live music, a taste of Thunder area, and more. VIP tickets are available. For tickets and info, visit thunderbythebay.org. You've seen me roll for a hundred G's, but I got a little more than dough riding on this one. They call you Lady Luck, but there is room for doubt. At times you have a very unladylike way of running out. And so the best that I can do is pray. <laughs> Luck be a lady tonight. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. Christmas Traditions by LuxArt Silks, where more is merrier. Make your holidays sparkle with style. Browse our amazing showroom, cute collectible cottages, and beautiful Christmas displays. Find the inspiration, selection, and quality you need to deck the halls merry and bright. Christmas Traditions also features the area's largest selection of quality pre-lit Christmas trees. Every size, shape, and color, and plenty of decorations to make your home shine for the holidays. Christmas Traditions by LuxArt Silks, where more is merrier. Visit us on New 301, just a quarter mile north of University Parkway. Are you considering joint replacement or revision surgery? Consider this. Dr. Edward Stolarski has performed thousands of successful joint replacement procedures and trained surgeons from all over the world. Using advanced technologies, Dr. Stolarski is able to perform some of the most complex surgeries. I wish I knew about Dr. Stolarski much sooner. After the surgery, I don't have any pain. It's like I've got a 16-year-old hip. My name's Ed Stolarski. What I really do is I give people back their life. Schedule a consultation today. Is your old garage door stuck or broken? Would a new one give you a lift? Let Precision Door Overhead Garage Door Service of Sarasota come to the rescue with prompt and affordable repair service. Replacement doors come with an array of styles and colors, and they are rated to meet and exceed Florida standards. From estimates to installation, your satisfaction is our priority. If you're not 100% satisfied with any product, service, or installation, we will make it right, because Precision Door Service is a name you can trust. An update now on the trial for a man accused of killing nine people at a Charleston church. Dylan Roof's trial is now underway, and his lawyer is not disputing that his client committed the murders. His attorney told jurors they should pay attention to the little things and use their common sense to try and figure out what made 22-year-old Dylan Roof hate black people so much. He also told jurors he may not call any witnesses because there's little question Roof committed the slayings. Roof could get the death penalty at the federal trial where he faces 33 different charges, including hate crimes. Roof has told the judge that he wants to represent himself during the penalty phase. Recovery efforts are now over and fire investigators in Oakland, California are zeroing in on a cause to that deadly warehouse fire. Fire that broke out during a party Friday night claimed the lives of 36 people. Fire officials say it appears it was an electrical device, most likely a refrigerator, that sparked the inferno during the techno dance party. Investigators say people living in the warehouse reported the refrigerator had been shorting out and blowing fuses. They're gathering those, those electrical potential sources of ignition and they're closely examining them. We brought in an electrical engineer from our fire research center and, um, and he's an expert in examining uh, electrical components. The burn markings appear to come from the area of the refrigerator, but no official cause has been determined yet. The warehouse had no permits for residential living. The Oakland City Council is slated to ratify a local state of emergency declaration tomorrow, which will begin the process for state and federal aid. 
An emotional day in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Families are finally being allowed to return home. On the same day, investigators make two arrests. Two juveniles have been charged in connection to the fire that left 14 people dead. Investigators say they'll face aggravated arson charges and are now in custody. Nearly 2,000 buildings and structures have been damaged or destroyed in these fires. Although residents are being allowed to return to find out what is left of their homes, a curfew will likely be put in place. It's just so hard, I know, to go back. You don't know what your home may look like. It might not be there at all. Yeah, tragic story, mm -hmm. you know, devastating. You, you know, you think uh, maybe natural conditions or natural causes started the fire. Yeah. When you hear about that, it's, it's just, it reminds you that, you know, you can't play with fire, especially no. when it's that kind of uh, dry out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, luckily, the rainfall has been falling rather uh, steadily there over the past couple of weeks now. So that's some good news yeah. on that front. Uh, we are looking at a progressive pattern. That's the weather headlines now showing uh, that frontal boundary down to our south right now. That's the front that brought us a drier air around. Not uh, too much cooler today, but it was a little bit of a little bit of a cooler start this morning. A chance for rain on Thursday. Increasing clouds is that front. We have some air kind of overriding the front. It's called some overrunning, if you will. And then an area of low pressure will develop along it and eventually sweep some colder air our way. Uh, that happens mainly on Friday and early Saturday. And we're in this progressive pattern, meaning that every uh, three days or so, four days, we have these little areas of low pressure that will develop and then move across the southeast and bring fronts our way. There's another one due to arrive possibly as early as Monday. Another cold front could be on the way and bringing with it a chance for showers. Now, as far as the rainfall goes now, some showers down to our south along that old frontal boundary and not much going on here. Uh, the storm system itself is developing uh, to the west of us over Texas. You can see some snow falling into Kansas, uh, parts of Missouri near St. Louis, getting a little bit of a light snow earlier today that has since moved on. 71 degrees. It's nice out there. Sunny and the relative humidity, not too bad. 73%. Winds are out of the northwest at 13, and the pressure is on the rise. The temperatures, dew point temperatures, are into the 50s over the panhandle. Low 60s here, so we'll look for low temperatures tonight in the low 60s. Our normal low, right around 55 degrees, so temperatures will be above average. Uh, to start things off tomorrow, but it should be rather nice and comfortable. We could have some fog, a better chance for fog, though, inland areas and to our north. 75 into Orlando right now. It's 81, though, in Miami and 80 in Key West. Temperatures around town into the 70s near the coast, low 70s in Cortez and Sarasota in Bradenton. A little bit warmer in Arcadia, Lake Placid into the upper 70s there, 77 degrees in Punta Gorda, Northport. Uh, you're at 76 in Inglewood at 74. Forecast looks like this tomorrow. We'll see increasing clouds, some uh, peaks of the sun now and again. And there is a slight chance for a shower throughout the day. Temperatures will only warm into the mid-70s, so a bit cooler tomorrow. A little bit uh, below average, if you will, just a one or two degrees below where it normally is. And the rain chance is not all that high tomorrow, 30%. And that's a result of that system uh, slowly developing. Satellite, satellite and radar imagery showing the stream of clouds right here. That's associated with the subtropical jet stream, which is fairly active right now overhead. And with that in mind, that's the reason why we're going to see another little spin up, uh, bring us a chance for some showers come late Thursday and into Friday morning. That dry air that's around is going to inhibit a lot of widespread rainfall with this next front, despite the fact that the cold front is fairly strong in terms of temperatures behind it. We're not going to get a lot of rainfall out of it. You can see that warm uh, that front slowly moving backward as a warm front and then showers and storms developing along it. Then here comes the colder air starting to blast in from the uh, northwest and with the high jet stream and the strong winds with it, it will create quite a bit of clouds around and a chance for showers on Friday and then look for breezy conditions and much cooler weather on Friday. As that Arctic air now is making its way through the northern Rockies and the northern Plain states right now, you can see that 10 degrees in Denver and much of the northeast under the chill as well. For boaters tomorrow, it shapes up like this. Winds will be out of the north at 5 to 10 knots, gusting as high as 15 in the afternoon, a moderate chop on the bays and inland waters. The extended forecast looks like this then. Uh, some fog maybe uh, inland and to the north, mainly a good chance for showers Thursday night, Friday morning. That 40% chance of rain will be mainly on Friday morning early, and then we turn cooler, 65 for a high on Friday, and then 48 for a low on Saturday morning. Scott? All right, Bob, thank you. Now on South Coast Traffic Watch, we're not seeing any crashes in the area, but we are seeing some traffic backed up on both US 41 and on Fruitville Road near downtown Sarasota. Haley.
Thank you, Scott. In health news tonight, women's lung function may decline faster during and after menopause. That's according to a recent study. Past research has shown that young women can boost their lung function through their mid-20s by following a healthy lifestyle that includes getting plenty of exercise and avoiding cigarettes. After that, lung function declines gradually. In a study by the University of Bergen in Norway, women transitioning to menopause lost about 10 milliliters of forced vital lung capacity more per year than pre-menopausal women. And after menopause, women lost an average of 12 milliliters a year. Intrauterine devices or IUDs and contraceptive implants that are placed under the skin may be the best option for women with diabetes. That's because they were linked with the lowest risk of blood clots. Hormonal contraceptives boost women's risk for clots, which can lead to heart attack and strokes. That is a particular problem for women with diabetes who are at an increased risk for blood clots to begin with. In a study by the University of California, Davis, there were an average of only three clot events each year for every 1,000 women using IUDs and less than one event per year among women using the implant. A biopsy-free way to find out if you have skin cancer could be on the way. The technique involves a high-resolution microscope that allows doctors to see patients' mitochondria. That's the powerhouses of the cell. Because cancer disrupts the network of the mitochondria, making it disorganized, doctors could potentially see that and identify it as cancer. The technique was successful in a study published in the journal Science Translational Medicine. But researchers say larger studies are necessary. And coming up next, a coordinated robbery in Reno. How state troopers were able to stop half of the suspects involved in this high-tech theft. And one man takes a classic Christmas donation campaign to the next level. Those stories are straight ahead. All new MySunCoast.com. Just another way we're here for you. For your plumbing, electrical, or air conditioning. And services is qualified. And service calls are free. And services.com. A-N-D services.com. Alex Karras Lincoln's holiday sales event is here. Drive a brand new 2017 Lincoln MKC Sports Utility for $269 per month or a 2017 MKZ for $299 per month. We are proud to introduce the newest addition to the Lincoln lineup, the all new 2017 Lincoln Continental. We have a great selection and ready for immediate delivery. Alex Karras Lincoln, affordable luxury. Winner of the prestigious 2015 President's Award, serving Florida's Sun Coast since 1978. We're located two miles north of the Sarasota Bradenton Airport on US 41. Whether you're a homeowner looking for a professional installation or a contractor looking for top quality products, Sarasota Glass & Mirror can meet your every need. For 42 years, Sarasota Glass & Mirror has been the area's premier supplier and installer of quality glass products for your home or business. As an authorized PGT WinGuard dealer, we know how to protect your home. With everything from the PGT WinGuard impact resistant windows and doors to shower enclosures and decorative mirrors, the Sarasota Glass & Mirror team has the knowledge to tackle any project. Being the caregiver for someone you love is truly a blessing, but sometimes you can lose a part of yourself. To be your best, for them and for you, it's important to have time to be able to recharge your batteries. When you call Tidewell Hospice, they can give you a chance to do just that, and with the peace of mind of knowing your loved one is in the very best hands. Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think. Holiday scratch-offs are here, and oh, they make great surprises. Imagine the joy they will bring with over $126 million in prizes. Use them for a wreath or a place card for your feast. Attach them, scratch them, and let the magic happen. Holiday scratch-offs. The Florida Lottery has them. Just imagine. The kitchen is where life happens. Minnesota Flooring now offers a wide variety of beautiful quality craft-made cabinetry to make sure the heart of your home reflects your style.
Visit us today at our new kitchen and bath cabinetry locations. Police in Reno, Nevada are searching for multiple suspects who robbed an Apple store. Police say between 10 to 15 people walked into the store last night and stole merchandise. It's estimated they were in there uh, for just 30 seconds and then out. They say the group left in different vehicles, one of which was followed by law enforcement. California Highway Patrol used spike strips to eventually stop that car. Five men were taken into custody, one under the age of 18. The car continued a short distance, maybe another 100 yards or so, and then realized that they weren't able to travel any further on two flat tires, especially since it's snowing over the pass, um, and they, uh, they, they stopped and, uh, and followed our uh, commands. Officers are looking for several more suspects. Meantime, at that Apple store, investigators are looking for fingerprints, and they do have surveillance video of the robbery. In California, a spectacular police chase. A DUI suspect hit a bicycle rider as he careened through the streets of Los Angeles. At one point, the man reached speeds of up to 80 miles an hour, and a stream of sparks shot out from underneath the car as it drove on the axle of one of the wheels. Just when the chase appeared to be over, the driver tried to plow his way through between cars on a side street, but finally a white pickup truck stopped him. The driver finally gave up and surrendered. Red Kettle campaign to the next level. Instead of just ringing a bell, he is living inside a kettle. Greg Box says he hasn't left this giant kettle in Sheboygan County since Saturday. He's calling it the 10K Red Kettle Stay, which means he's staying in there until the Salvation Army raises $10,000. And his community is supporting his stay. People who I didn't even know brought me space heaters. People I didn't know brought me a sandwich for lunch, a cup of hot chocolate. Could be today, it could be five days from now, it could be 10 days from now, but it'll be, I have faith. At last check, Greg has raised nearly $4,000 of his $10,000 goal. Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know? Two talented Indiana contractors are back with another hit. The two recorded the popular carol, Mary, Mary Did You Know, while on the job, and already it's gotten more than 18 million views. Their latest viral hit was almost never recorded. They got requests for the song, but Aaron Gray and Josh Arnett didn't know the song. During the recording, they had to look at their phones for the lyrics, and they only practiced it once before the recording. Contractors have become celebrities. They've been invited to sing at both the Indiana State House and the Governor's Mansion over the last year. And I really like the acoustics they get from the, right. that empty the house empty there. House. Yeah. yeah, that's a good way to spend uh -huh. your break. Singing is therapeutic, <laughs> and they're really good. We hope they're on break. Yeah, well, that's true, because the person getting that house filled is like, yeah. I want my house that's filled. Right. Come on. Well, still to come in your Suncoast News, two new partnerships that are giving college students more opportunities. What USF and New College of Florida are doing to get these students out of the classroom and into the community. That story coming up. Since 1972, Sleep King has provided quality mattresses and accessories at the best discounted prices available. Top brands like Simmons, Sealy, Serta, Beautyrest, iComfort, and more. With available free delivery, free financing, and free setup and removal. For a comfortable night's sleep with same-day delivery, even if we have to carry it on our backs. Trust Sleep King of Sarasota. Buy it today. Sleep on it tonight. Uh, they, they care. They, they take the time to understand you, take the time to understand your case. There's no better satisfaction to me than to see a client who is happy because of the job we've done for them. It's really actually very comforting to know that there's someone that you've heard of and you're getting recommendations about that you can turn to when you have a problem. I felt like I had a partner in this and uh, he was going to be by my side. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. They're coming from Tampa, Fort Myers, even Orlando. They're coming from everywhere.
everywhere for the Sarasota Ford Promise. Our promise means a new car you'll love. If not, return it for one you do. At Sarasota Ford, we promise live market pricing. We monitor national pricing on our entire inventory so you get the best deal. In fact, we guarantee it. Bring us any competitor's ad and we'll beat it by at least $1,000. That's why they're coming from everywhere to Sarasota Ford, where 41 meets 301. SarasotaFord.com. The official salon of ABC7. If you have a suspicion for harboring prostate cancer, we have a way of diagnosing by using an exquisite instrument called three-dimensional color flow power Doppler ultrasound. Using this system, we can identify abnormalities within the prostate that you could otherwise never detect. The Detoli Cancer Center is the only center in the southeastern United States which has this technology. If you have prostate cancer, we will find it.